Welcome, everyone. It looks like uh, we got a full house here. We'll let a couple more folks in, but we got to get started. Uh, my name is Katie W. Uh, this is the Wealth Wells. We're an active uh, group of investors and uh, day traders, and we show people how uh, to build wealth and to maximize your skills and develop skills so that you can be an effective day trader. Uh, this training is part of a series of training uh, that covers some key elements. So uh, I'm going to try to get this done in 30 minutes or less so that you guys can understand really how to, uh, how to day trade effectively with the tools that you need. Then we'll open it up for question and answer, and I'll let you guys get on your way. Try to get it done in 30 minutes, all right? So give me a thumbs up, guys, if you can see my screen. I'm gonna share my screen now. Let me know if you can see my screen. All right, excellent, you can? Excellent, okay, good. So let me start by saying to you guys, there are, three key items that you're going to need to effectively day trade SPY and day trade anything for that matter. To effectively day trade SPY, three key items you're going to need. Number one, volume. Number two, volatility. Number three, price action. Now, this training today is part of a series of trainings that we are have done and we will continue to post uh, and share with you guys uh, to help you be effective. Uh, if you haven't taken the volume training, I encourage you and you're listening to this on any of our social media platforms or on YouTube or what have you. Uh, don't worry, guys, we're going to save it and record it and put it on the social media. But for those of you who are just now getting to this, if you're listening to this right now on YouTube, stop. Stop. Go down below, look in the description and do two things. Do yourself a favor. The first thing you need to do is come be a part of the Wealth Wells Discord. Come join the Wealth Wells. Uh, we're crushing it. We have a lot of people that we're helping every single day uh, change their life and understand how to properly day trade. We started it recently, okay, within the last couple of months, and we're letting it grow organically, right? Here's why. There's a lot of junk out there. We've noticed a lot of people getting trained the wrong way. They're, they're learning strategies or they're different training, uh, different uh, ways to trade the market, and uh, it's just not effective. Uh, we're a bunch of Wall Street traders and ex-Wall Street traders and previous experienced traders. And there's a bunch of us inside of this uh, network. And let me tell you, we know how to trade. Come join the Discord. Look for the link down below. It's free. Come learn, come grow, and come crush it every day. Uh, you should look down in the description of this video once we post it, guys, and click the volume training. Go through the volume series first to understand why you need volume why it's important, and how to effectively day trade. But this video right now is about the second most important thing that you're going to need to effectively day trade SPY. And really any, any training, uh, trading, you're going to need volatility. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to discuss why volatility is so important, uh, why you need it, how to use it and chart it, and then how to tie it all together. OK, so, you know, guys, I'm not really big on uh, I'm not really big on can definitions and, you know, things like that. But to help the training move along, I found it best to just, you know, go online and get a definition of, you know, VIX. All right. Now, a real quick definition. You guys can go to investopedia.com. You can look up all your definitions for what these uh, these terms mean. But really, really short, I really want to highlight that VIX represents the market's expectations for the relative strength of near-term price changes of the S&P index, uh, SPX. So if you know anything about SPX, it's, it's called SPY's big brother. We call it that because it's 10X, thus the word, that's the letter X, SPX, S&P times 10. It's 10 times uh, what SPY is when you do the calculation and movement. So for example, if you were to come to SPY, well, SPY, let's see how do you hide these levels? Well, if SPY is hanging around 47 or 470, this means XPX is at 4,700. That's all it means, okay? So if you can effectively tra day trade SPY, you can effectively day trade SPX, all right? So now for a moment here, we're going to, uh, we're going to discuss this, uh, this matter of the VIX, all right? These, this relative strength, right? In short, we use VIX to gauge the second most important item when it comes to day trading, which is volatility, all right? You need three things to effectively day trade. I say it all the time in my trainings. I want to drill it in your head, volume, volatility, price action. 
You need all three to effectively day trade on a consistent basis. Any stock that you get, even if you guys are playing earnings plays, if you're trading other tickers, if you're only trading SPY, doesn't matter. You need volume, volatility, price action. Let's talk about why volatility is so important. We understand already that we measure or we gauge volatility in the market by looking at the VIX. The VIX is what we track. Now, we already looked at the definition of VIX. We know it represents the market's expectations of strength, relative strength. Or it could be said, we use it to gauge if there's going to be a fast price change, right? Volatility, or how fast a price change is going to hit the market based on market sentiment, all right? What does a fast price change do? A fast price change creates volatility. It makes the stock, the ticker, or S&P, go up very fast or down very fast. Hint, hint, that is called volatility. So in, in order to measure volatility, we're going to track the VIX. That's the first thing you need to know, okay? Now, how can we use the VIX to day trade SPY? Well, if it's measuring the volatility of the S&P, and SPY is the whole market ETF for the S&P, if we can uh, not predict, but if we can gauge uh, an anticipated move on VIX using our other market indicators, based on all of our other indicators you guys have learned in the training, hint, hint, if you haven't joined the training or haven't signed up for the training, come over to the Wealth Wells. The, the link for this Discord is down below. Hit training and then sign up for training here. There's three different trainings. They're all one-on-ones just you and myself or another well, and we're training you on the different facets and aspects. All you're covering is the time. We don't make our money off of training. We want to help you and build the network out. So to do that, we'll take time away from our family and things that we want to do to train you guys and help you out. All right. So go there, sign up for one-on-one -on -one trainings, get the education and training that you need. A lot of people are crushing it every day. But if you've had the training, then you know, all right, I've charted I understand what VIX is measuring. Now we need to cover what should we be looking for in the VIX? How can we use it to day trade SPY? What's our levels? And what happens as I'm moving intraday and things are not lining up? Maybe the market is disjointed. What do I do? Well, one good thing is you can use the VIX. So on your screen, you guys see the VIX on a daily level. So right away, I can clearly see, just looking at the VIX, just looking at the VIX for the year 2021, which is where we are here, you don't even need a level here. You can clearly see around 25, 98, somewhere around this 24, 25 area, we can look for a nice healthy rejection. As we get even higher, we can look for more egregious or volatile moves to the downside. Now let's go ahead together and chart VIX. Now, I, I put some lines up there that I track. This is the exact same chart in TradingView that I use to trade. So I didn't make these levels up. I didn't just say, well, let me create something to give you an example. These are my exact levels that we're going to be using, okay? So let's see here. See if we can get the VIX to act right, this uh, TradingView to act right here. Okay, been tracking some other stocks here. Um, let's see. All right, great. There we go. Let's see if we can get the VIX in here. There we go. Trading has been acting weird lately, guys. I mean, it just has been. This has been acting weird for the last week or so. So today is December 25th. You're like, what? He's doing this on a holiday? Yes, I am. Because we're just trying to build the content and help you guys out. All right. It takes me. I, I love this stuff. I don't mind doing it for you. It's 318 in the afternoon. I'm going to do a quick, you know, doing a quick training. All you guys that's joining, uh, you're taking time out your day to do this. Hey, I'm going to give you something. That's going to benefit you and help you. All right. Okay. So we have the VIX here. As you know, if you if you want to learn about how I chart and levels, go watch the volume video, go watch the price action videos in the training series. You can catch the link below. Okay. But you guys know that I uh I mark my levels based on price action or the ticker's reaction to that level. So some levels are daily at a higher time frame, and then I move down to a lower time frame. So we're looking at VIX on a three minute right now, right? And for example, we're just gonna take a look at, we're just gonna take a look at uh, Friday, okay? We know that VIX represents volatility, right? Volatility 
We need volatility or egregious moves in one way or the other, pops, shorts, hard moves. We need that in order to day trade SPY options, right? That's what we're talking about here, okay? Another indicator of VIX, you can check, it's very closely related to the fear and greed index, all right? Again, I hate doing can definitions. I don't do them because you can look at these online, but I'm only showing you this so you can understand how it relates to VIX, all right? VIX, like we said, well, it's going to measure volatility, how fast a price is going to move based on market sentiment, how fast uh, the S&P is going to move, right? Well, when you look at the fear and greed index, it can give you an indication of if an anticipated move is getting ready to happen. If we have extreme fear, we're going to move one direction. If we have extreme greed, we're going to move in another direction. And we want those hard pops or egregious moves because volatility makes the price of an option jump very fast. So one component that here are several fear and greed indicators. One component, one fear and greed indicator is going to be the VIX, right? Market volatility, right? We see it right there, right? So on today, December 25th, 2001 at 320, the overall consensus is it's neutral. Why? You can see over a 50-day moving average really all over the year. We can see this moving average line, right? And so far, this line is around 18, 17.96. So the VIX is at 17.96. It has a neutral reading. It indicates that neutral, the market risks are neutral, right? So this means that we're hovering around a mean or a neutral area, right? We could keep continue to go lower. We could pop to the high side. So now that we understand, all right, we know what VIX is. We know it's a fear and greed index, one of them. We know we need volatility to trade options. We know it's closely linked to SPY, obviously. Well, now we can use it as an intraday indicator to move or to, to make a decision. So here's what I would do. I've already charted VIX. Let's go to a high time frame. I've already charted VIX. I encourage you to do the same. All right. Go from the weekly all the way down to the daily. But just for the sake of time, I'm going down. I'm showing you guys a chart on VIX for daily. Now, just take a look at this chart. What do you notice about this chart? What are some levels that speak out to you immediately? Well, I've got three circles down here at the bottom, and that's not coincidence. That's just for a reason. It's to show me and you when VIX reaches 16 to 7 area, all the way down to 14 area, I can expect I have a high probability of an egregious move to the upside in VIX. Now, now traders understand that VIX has an inverse relation to SPY, right? When volatility is high, moving up, this means people want to sell off, right? A sell-off is coming there, or a sell-off is happening. Therefore, SPY is being shorted or going down. When VIX is going down, well, guess what? SPY is running up. They're inverse. That's how they're related, right? So you can see them pretty clearly if we set them side by side, right? Let me bring up the SPY here. And I've got SPY um, on a, let's put SPY on a, you know what? Let's keep SPY on the three minute here. I'm going to show, we're going to discuss this day. But um, do you guys understand what I'm saying so far? We know SPY and VIX are inverse. You know what? Let me go ahead and put on the daily so that you guys can see it. All right. Not SPY on a daily. Not SPY on a daily. I've got my uh, crosshairs on my, uh, on my trading view synced. And you can clearly see right here, look, VIX had a pop. Well, let me bring this into focus a little bit more. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, let me get rid of, uh, okay, let me get rid of uh, those. Uh, VIX had a pop, right? It's running hot, running hot, goes all the way up to 32. Notice what SPY does. SPY dumps, 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 dumps. Now, you would know where SPY is going to stop or have a good indication because you'd have price levels on there. You took the price levels training price action, and you took the volume training. So you understand, you know where SPY is going, and you know it to the T. You also took the market indicators training. You also understand volume, 
You also understand now the VIX. And so you're using all of the, you also understand pre-market training that you've taken. So all of these trainings you've taken, and now you understand how your levels can be set perfectly, right? But as VIX runs up, we see there's a direct correlation, right? Now, here's what's interesting about these two charts here. You can use, you can use, let's take this volume off of here. Uh, you can use the VIX to come up with not just swing trades, but correct intraday trades with precise entries. Let me show you. Let's go down to a three minute. Let's go to three minute. Stretch this chart out. Stay with me. Okay. Going down to the three minute here. And this is the 23rd. So this is just our past Friday. All right. And let's do the same over here on SPY. Going down to three minutes. We're looking at the 23rd. Now, of course, we've got volume by time. So we understand if you've taken the volume training, you know what we mean. We understand that we have sufficient volume for a move to enter a trade. That's key. We've got volume. So it means check the first one. We know we've, we've covered that, all right? We also have volume by time. We've covered that training as well. You can, you can know, you already know, all right, I have enough volume by time, volume by price. I know what my volume is for the day. I've got a good move. You've done your pre-market. You understood that, you know, coming into the open, we had a significant chance to bounce here, all right? Many of us in the Discord took that play. Uh, even those who missed this initial play, we still used our indicators to enter the trade here on the 23rd, and we got it caught a nice rip and exit right there, right? Now, this ended up being a 45% move, was a nice trade, especially for those who even missed the run-up, just was patient, used our indicators, still made money, and then other trades for the rest of the day. All right, so now let's look at our levels. Let's look at some of our levels here, okay? Now, on SPY, let's look over here. We had a strong level at 46866. That's key. So once we saw SPY hold in pre-market, in this zone, we had an excellent chance for SPY to bounce and run up. Excellent chance, right? Well, when SPY opened up, look at where the VIX is. Look at where the VIX is. The VIX opens immediately and hits a price level. You see that VIX hits 1823. That's a price level. This zone here. So we're looking, if you miss the first pop, you're looking for a break and close below this price level on VIX, coupled with a break and close above your next price level on SPY, which we took to enter another rip, right? So for those who missed the first run up, you simply checked VIX and you understood that the direction of VIX was still going in your favor for a nice call position. You waited till VIX hit a level that you've already charted. Once VIX confirms with follow through in its level, SPY confirms with follow through, you can feel confident that VIX is coming down to the next level. And look at what it did. It just barely touches our next level at 1761. Now you saw in a higher time frame, these levels were already marked, folks. This isn't something new, right? If you've been trading the VIX, you know we've been in these areas before, right? So let's recap real quick. What's the VIX? It measures volatility, right? It's an anticipated move that's coming in the market. It's directly related to S&P. Perfect. All right, how do we use it to trade? We set our price levels on both VIX and SPY. We wait for confirmation. We wait for a break and follow through. We enter our trades with volume and we hold until our price level or near of, okay? VIX gives us the added emphasis that the move or the hold is still good, okay? Now, of course, we're gonna use our other market indicators. Of course, we're using volume and other things that we've covered in the training, but this is specifically focused on VIX. Let's talk about these levels, right? So you guys already know that when you chart anything, you're gonna go from higher to lower. So you guys are seeing, you know, you don't see a monthly on here, although we could, we could, we could write that, but you see some daily, four hour, daily, four hour, 30 minute, two hour, one hour and weekly. So these price levels represent um, support and resistance. It represents the amount of uh, time really that it's gonna take SPY to get past, or rather VIX to get past that level. So when I have a daily level here, I know 
that for the better part of the day, perfect example, look at the 22nd, for the better part of the day, I'm going to be chopping at that level. I'll eventually break it, but I know it's more respected as opposed to an unnamed one or a two hour. You see that? See how it blows through these levels here and just continues to come down. And then the two hour after one bounce, we finally break it, right? Although it respects it, it still uh, moves through these levels on a lower time frame faster than it would on the higher time frame. Why is that important for us? Because this is going to tell you how much time, in theory, how much time it's going to take for the stock to move past your level. You ever been inside of a trade and you're nervous? You're like, man, I don't know if the hold is good. The trade starts to dance around. Perhaps you're looking at a lower time frame, which you shouldn't be doing. Uh, for newbies, they, you know, they, they, they get nervous. They don't know if the hold is good. It's dancing. You get these wicks and you're starting to get wicked out and you're starting to get nervous. Well, if you chart this way with your price levels and put the time frames by them, you can feel confident that, yes, eventually with volume, with volatility, with momentum, with market sentiment, that you're eventually going to break your level. The hold is still good. The hold is still good because you're using the VIX to find out the direction and the volatility in the market. You just know that it's going to take a little longer. So perhaps we sit here. Let's see. Once we rejected here at 939, we didn't really break again until 1012 and really rip until 1045. So it could be said we, we were at this level for about an hour, about an hour. Oh, I have a two hour here. I have a two hour price level. So this tells me that for two hours, I have a potential. I'll break it if there's volatility, market sentiment, momentum. I'll break it. But I can fully expect to reject and dance around this area for a minute. Therefore, I can rest easy. If I get a good entry, I can rest easy because I know that if I break this level with any amount of volume and volatility, I am coming down to my next price level, even if I dance around for a while. And that is exactly what we did on SPY on Friday. Many of you guys took this trade all the way to its next price target of 47206. Uh, Very good, which corresponds to the VIX price target of 1761. Do you see the marriage here? Do you see the relation? When you chart SPY, you should always be charting VIX, and you should understand uh, that both levels are respective, but VIX will give you the pop. Now, here's how you play it. All right, here's how you play it. Here's a great example here, right? Great example here. Let's, let's go here. Great example. At about 10.28, we saw VIX reject off of our price level hard right? So if you were looking to play SPY, you would have seen a nice overlap in price levels, and you would have been able to get long here or enter into a call position and ride it until you saw any rejection on VIX or leave it alone, right? And so you could have rolled this move all the way down here. Uh, you guys know I like to exit into strength. So when I'm in days that you know, maybe it's a, it's a, we could call them a weird day where maybe Jay Powell is speaking, or maybe the president is speaking, or maybe it's a short week, or maybe we're going into a short week, or maybe it's, a, it's an unexpected day. Oftentimes I take profit within 10 cents of my profit target. So for this trade right here, uh, the, 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 the trade bounced at 1770. My price target is 1761. That's about 10 cent difference. We took profit. Boom although it still hit our price target. But we just shaved some risk off the table. Why? Because we were able to look at VIX. Well, when you come over here to SPY, there's no price levels in this area. There's no price levels. In fact, when you were trading this, if you look to your right here, this is how the ticker looked. It was just moving. You, you don't know if it's going to go up or down. But on the VIX, you knew you were right at your price level within 10 cents. So guess what? It is a, it, it's a, a short week. You understood, um, you know, what's happening in the market that day. You go ahead and take profit. Make sense? And I think I said Friday, this was Thursday. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. You, you, December 23rd is what we're charting, what we're talking about here, the trades we made. Okay. All right. If it's okay to move on, guys, give me a thumbs up. Give me some feedback. 
uh, hold your questions to the end. I see you guys chatting a little bit. Hold your questions to the end so I can um, so I can help you. And um, but keep putting them in there, and I'll, I'll address them in the end, and uh, we'll go over that. So let's recap. We've talked about the three critical things that every trader needs to effectively trade, day trade spy: volume, volatility, price action. You know where to go get this training here, but we're talking about volatility. We know what VIX is. We know uh, what VIX measures. It's a fear and greed index. We know that VIX can represent or represents volatile moves, volatility, pops, shorts, right? In the market, very egregious moves in order for us to catch the rips or catch the run-ups. And so we chart the VIX along with our other market indicators that's covered in the rest of the training. You want to know about that? No problem. Come over here, join the Wealth Wells, look at the link below, hit the one-on-one -on -one tab, sign up for the, the sign up with the link tree there so we can help you guys. All right. All right. So we've covered those. Now let's cover one key thing that I see a lot of people. I got about five minutes left in this training. And I want to help you guys. What happens when new traders miss a trade and they try to still make money? Then you FOMO, you chase. That's what happens. So this day on the 23rd, you would have seen the pop and missed it. Oh, man, I don't know what to do. Well, let's say you missed this next pop. Oh, man, I don't know what to do. And let's just say spy as it as it has you don't take a trade anywhere up in here you're like okay i'm done i can't i'm done because you missed your trade you missed the move and keep in mind you know hindsight is 2020 but this is what you're seeing you're just seeing spy do this and you don't know what to do you're like man now you've got your other market indicators but you weren't comfortable taking the call right what could you do if you really want to take a position what could you do well, because you track the VIX, you can look at the VIX options chain and you can play the VIX. So if you miss a run up on SPY, no problem. You can still catch the short on VIX or call on VIX. For many of you guys in the Discord, you know I do this all the time. I call them out all the time. We just short the VIX or we run up the VIX as well. Simultaneously, a lot of times we're in two trades and we're banking on both of them, banking substantial income, substantial profits. Why? Because we understand the marriage between VIX and SPY. You guys know I'm very big on trading what you see, trading what you see, trading what you track. What does that mean? What does it mean to trade what you track? Well, if you come over to the Discord and the Wealth Wells, all right, you click the one-on-one -on -one tab, you'll know that there are three trainings there. And one of those trainings centers around market indicators. And there are market indicators that we track intraday to understand how to effectively make trades. Well, if we're tracking them, one of them is the VIX, wouldn't it make sense to just trade them? We can trade them live. So you never have to FOMO. You never have to think that I missed a trade. Why? Because every day live, you have several trades available to you. It eliminates FOMO. It makes you a better trader. It helps you become an elite trader and a consistently profitable trader. All right, let's do a quick recap once again. What are the three things you need to effectively day trade SPY? Number one, volume, volatility, price action. You can find these trainings in the link below this video. Uh, why, why can we use uh, a VIX rather? How can we use VIX to trade SPY? How does it play? Well, we know VIX, it represents volatility. So when there is volatility in either direction in VIX, we know it's going to be represented in SPY with run-ups or dumps. We use calls or puts to play those moves, right? We chart the VIX so that we develop levels to know if the hold is good or if we can have a new entry or exit, okay? And then if we miss a move, if we've missed a move in SPY, what can we do? We simply bring up the VIX option chain Check to see if VIX is close to or at its level and catch the run up and break down. Especially, this is especially interesting here. I want you guys to look at this, this, this period right here. Let me see if I can highlight this. I want you guys to look at that period there. Um, and let's see here if I can just, I just wanna capture one little thing here. Let's get this rectangle out here. This area right here, I want you to look at that area right there. So. 1045 to uh, about uh, 212, okay? Let's do it again here. 
let's see here, 1045, right? 1045. Let's see if we can do this again to about, uh, what did we say, 212? Two, there we are, right there, 212, okay. All right, now here's a beautiful example, all right? You see how there's not much movement in SPY. SPY's range is really what, 14, uh, 470, 91. So we're talking about what, uh, 60 cent move, 60 cents. That's what SPY is, less than that, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not keep me honest here, guys. It's really less than that. But it did, it did come down here. So SPY's move here, is about 746. Yeah, same. Okay. All right. So we're talking about a 60 cents, right? So, you know, obviously that's a tight range. That's a tight range. I mean, something less than a dollar, you know what I mean? That's a tight range, right? So when you, when you think about trading in this range, um, you know, this is, this is more, more of a, I would say, 75 cent range and not six, 75 cent range, give or take. All right. When you think about trading in this range, it's really hard to get entries and exits. I mean, you really, this is really not a good time to trade. Additionally, we know that this, this time period is going to be a low volume time period, right? Look, look down here, look at the corresponding volume. Look at the corresponding volume. So a lot of traders aren't trading, you know, making many trades intraday in this midday section uh, session here. Oftentimes you guys have hear, hear me, I'm, I'm not, I'm setting up swings, I'm researching other things, I may be in a, a, a small a training with someone during the day, or I'm training you guys live in the live channel while I trade. But now I want you to go look at VIX. Now VIX has a move here from 1770 to 1826, all right? So VIX has similar movement, similar distance, but the reality is the move is more egregious, right? I won't say similar distance, the move is more egregious. So you have higher swings here, right? In this move, it's more volatile, right? Than you do on SPY. In addition, VIX clearly hits a price level, which you can enter here because we just exited a call on SPY. We exit a call on SPY, you can catch your bounce into a call on VIX. Once VIX hits a level, exit and get back into a short or a put in VIX until you hit your price level, right? Simultaneously, remember, if VIX is going down, you can enter another call here on SPY. So many of you have asked, how am I able to enter into so many you know, trades like this? seamlessly with confidence, not get, not get confused, not get, well, because I'm trading just like this, guys, I've got both views on my screen. I, I've got my active trader up. I simply, there's plenty of time. I simply click the options chain and I enter my position and I have confidence. It's going to reach my level, especially folks, if you don't get a zero DTE, three DTE, five DTE, even better. But even if you did play a zero DTE, VIX, it's going to respect your levels, especially if you have the volatility that you're looking for, which we did. We absolutely did. All right. We're at our time, guys. We, we, we've, we're at our time limit right here. Hope this was informative for you. I hope this helped you. Um, are there any questions? Okay. No questions. Um, anything else, guys, DM me. Look us up. You can go to Instagram the Wealth Wells. You can come and join the Discord, the Wealth Wells. Jump into the SPY, the day trading only's room. Uh, we're crushing it, guys. Absolutely crushing it every day. Uh, the room is free. I started this Discord because, quite frankly, there was a lot of erroneous, poor trading from new traders who are posing as experienced traders. The reality is, guys, this thing is difficult to be consistent, and you have to learn the skills. Let me help you. Come join the Wealth Wells. Come be a part of the training and let us get you to the next level. All right. Listen, it's a pleasure talking with you guys. I want you to come and crush it, chart, work on your levels. Reach out to us if you need anything. KDW signing out.